This is Twit. I had a recent situation where my wife's phone died. I actually had to send it into the manufacturer to get a replacement. And because we use LastPass and two-factor authentication, the Google Authenticator obviously was not installed, and so we had a problem with that. Um, then I saw, I think it was Jason and Padre talking about this type of situation, and they said, oh, we don't use Google Authenticator, we use Authy. And so I'd like you to talk about Google or, uh, Authy versus Google Authenticator and one why one is better than the other. Yeah. So, well, you just found out why one's better than the other. So let me explain a little bit what authenticators do. I Good good on you. You're, you're doing the right thing. You're using LastPass, a password, which I should mention is a sponsor, but any password vault is a better solution because they encourage you to make a separate password for every site and to make that password long and strong, which means unmemorable. So password vault keeps track of it for you. That way you can have good passwords instead of relying on, you know, your daughter's birth date and your dog's first name. So, that, I mean, that's all good. And then you make it even better when you turn on two-factor authentication. I'm always telling people to do that. It adds a little bit of complexity and trouble, but it sure makes it hard for hackers to get into your account. And most, most services now offer two-factor. Google, Twitter, Facebook, your bank. All of them will say, all right, here's your, you know, you got your password. Log into your bank. And now... We're going to either send you a six-digit code. That way it'll be based, you know, you'll have to have your phone. That's a less good way to do it because people can steal your phone number. It's not unheard of. Uh, it's not hard, in fact. Uh, just a little social engineering with your phone company, and they can get a SIM and have that two-factor sent to them instead of you. So that's why we regularly recommend authenticator programs. They would have to have physical possession of your phone. Now, the Google Authenticator... It works the same way. All of these authenticators work the same way. Microsoft has one. LastPass has one. And then there's the one I use and recommend. And so do all the people uh, on my network because they're copying me. It's called Authy. Uh, they all work the same way. They, do, they take a secret number, which is kind of like the password. It's created by the site, the bank, the Google, Twitter, whatever. A long secret number that's yours and yours alone. And then they do something interesting. They combine it with the time of day using a technique we call hash, hashing. They make a hash that creates a six-digit number that changes every 30 seconds. So it's a one-time password. It's only good for 30 seconds. So even if somebody got it, they'd have to get into your account within 30 seconds because it's no good after that. As you probably noticed, if you don't use it right away, it doesn't work anymore. And if you use an authenticator, you'll see every 30 seconds that six-digit number will change. So that's really good. What that what that's telling, let's say we're talking about uh, Google. What that's telling Google is, all right, you know, this is good. Uh, Tom has not only the password, but he must, we must have given him that secret number and he must have an authenticator device because he's got the correct six-digit six code based on the time of the day and that number. So that's a good, second factor is a good way to do it because even if a bad guy can steal or guess your password, he's unlikely to be able to steal or guess that, that secret code. But... Here's the problem. You know, when you first set up Google Authenticator or any authenticator, you're either entering in this 16-digit code or, more likely, you're using the QR code. Google will put up a little code on the screen you take a picture of with your phone, and it automatically populates that long number so you don't have to type it in. But that's what's coming across in that QR code. So there are ways that you can... You know, if 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 what happens to your what happened to your wife happens to you, well, now you have to go back and reset the secret number with all of these places, and you can recreate. You're going to get new six-digit codes. The old one won't work anymore. You're going to get a new number from Google, but you have to go back to Google, Facebook, your bank, Twitter, everywhere you use second-factor authentication, and get a new number from them. Re you know, recreate the number, throw out the old one, or you could store the code the qr code i used to do this i'd take a picture of it and put i'd put it put it somewhere safe put it in your last pass for instance and then that way when you get a new phone you can redo it by just opening last pass and using that code again and scanning it authy solves this problem by having a central account where these numbers are stored now there's a risk there because now those numbers are being stored on somebody else's server 
But Authy does, a, I think, a good job of encrypting it. They don't have access to it. You can also protect it with a pass, a local password as well as an encryption password. So it's highly unlikely that it will leak out. And even if it did, remember, you have to have both the password and the second factor. So that's why we all use Authy because we we change phones a lot. I'm, I have a new phone every few months, sometimes more often than that. I don't want to have to set up Google Authenticator every every time. So I once I use Authy, and I can do it on a phone. I have Authy on my desktop, on my phone, everywhere. And once I set it up, once I set up that new account with a two-factor and I and I send it to Authy, it's now in my account. And when I put Authy on a new phone, all of them will be there. So you're still going to have to go back. Your wife's still going to have to go back and recreate all of these second factors. But at least this time, she won't have to, she'll never have to do it again. It'll be in Authy. Yeah. You know, the thing that's a little confusing to me is when I look at LastPass and they talk about here's your two-factor authentication methods that we approve, and they have Google Authenticator, but they don't have Authy. That's because and, Google they, it's called Google Authenticator. It shouldn't be. It's just that, that there is no name, well, there's no well-known name for this process, but authentic Google Authenticator works the same way as the LastPass Authenticator, works the same way as the Microsoft Authenticator, works the same way as Authy. They all will give you exactly the same six-digit number. So it doesn't matter. If, if, all right, so I can use Authy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Any, in, anytime you see Google Authenticator, you can use Authy or Microsoft Authenticator or LastPass Authenticator. They all. It's a standard method of taking the long code that's provided by the site and hashing it with the time of day is a standard method yeah yeah that sounds great i'm looking forward to uh putting that on both her phone and mine so thank you very yeah much. i yeah i i think it's the right way to go i i use it all the time and uh there is that a di potential additional risk but if you think about it there's a, i also added it's kind of fun actually it's an interesting mental exercise to think about security flaws and I, you maybe didn't even notice this, but I introduced a security flaw in our discussion because I said, well, what you could do with Google Authenticator is take a picture of the QR code when you get it from the site and store it in LastPass. But I just, that's actually a bad thing to do because if a bad guy, the whole reason you're doing this is if a bad guy gets your password, he still needs that second factor. You don't want to put the second factor information in the same place you put the password. Because then if the bad guy gets one, he'll get the other. And you don't have the benefits of second factor. So, in fact, that's why I don't use the LastPass authenticator. I use I use uh, Authy. And even if somebody got the Authy account, they still wouldn't have the passwords. But if I store the, the authenticator QR code in, in LastPass, that's actually introducing a flaw, a potential risk. So I think Authy is the best way to go. It's free, too, by the way. A-U-T-H-Y, Authy.com. Leo Laporte, the tech guy.